that like mini blizzard there for, I don't know. That was kind of crazy. My husband and son are on their way to Sutton for a playoff hockey game for his team. And I hear it's like coming down like crazy there. It, it was. First a bit. Oh, okay. Just a little bit. Well, the Lord's in control. We can't complain. We haven't really had very much of the white stuff lately, have we? I'd like to start um, this evening by reading um, Psalm 25. This morning we read Psalm 24. I'm going to read Psalm 25. It's a, a prayer that David wrote for defense, guidance, and pardon. Um, and it's cool that as we trust in God, um, he grants the same request of us. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you are good, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. For those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction and my distress and take away my sins. See how my enemies have increased and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Lead me not, lead me not to put, let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me because my hope is in you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these prayers, these psalms of David, Lord, and that these can be our prayers, Lord, and that you hear our, our cries for, for guidance. We hear, you hear our, our cries when we're in, in any situation, Lord God, and um, you are our hope and you are our peace. And um, you are the forgiver of our sins. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. And we just pray as we um, sing to you tonight, Lord. And remember all that you have done. Concentrate on who you are, Lord Jesus. That you would encourage our hearts in you. That we would encourage one another by being here and worshiping you together. And that you would um, teach us what you want us to know through your word um, in Job tonight, Lord. We're so excited for what we're going to learn. And we just give you all the glory, all the praise and honor that's due your name tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand with us. We're going to sing God is Great. Dancing. 
I'm so glad you all are here because I was getting phone calls. People going, it's too stormy. I'm not coming tonight. That was for five minutes. That's it. The storm was over. Man, I looked outside, couldn't see the house across the street, and then it was done. I love snowfalls like that. Man, but I'm glad you all showed up. That's very cool. Karen's looking comfy. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, I thought, who's that really short person that came to me? You know, I'm not even allowed to talk about short people, sir. Oh, man, we're, we've been studying Job. We started Job this morning. But, oh, before we go there, we have an announcement. We have to make a formal announcement. There is an annual general meeting Wednesday. All Bible studies are canceled on Wednesday. You're welcome to join us at this annual meeting. Um, uh, the bylaws and the financials are all available through the office. You can give us a shout. All of our mission statement and our vision statement and all the things that we believe are on our website. You can check those out if you want. If you would like a copy of anything, give me a call. I'll probably tell you no, but you can try anyway. You know, I will I will get Mary to make you copies. Is Mary here? Mary, see Mary over there? Any administration you want done? There you go. She's the best. 
Okay. <laughs> oh man, we better pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are so good. You are so good. We, we might think that good isn't as good as great. But when we talk about good and the goodness of God, there is no gooder. You are the goodest. God, we have a wonderful God. We have an amazing God. We have a good God. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for all you're doing for us. The way you're working in our hearts and our minds and transforming us into the very image of Christ. We thank you so much for that. You are a good, good God. Thank you, Lord, for everybody that couldn't be here tonight. We pray your blessing upon them. We pray that you work in their hearts and their lives. Father, for all those who are watching on Facebook, we pray in Jesus' name you'd bless them. Lord, for all of the people that are hurting, all the troubles and trials that we're going through, everybody's got their own trials and their own troubles. But we know that they're not always a bad thing. In fact, they're probably a good thing. Because God's using those things in our life to transform us, to build character in us, to put us back into the image of Christ from whence we came. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you. Pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to us tonight as we look into the word of God. Speak to us. Transform our minds through the power of the word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, this morning we started the, uh, the book of Job. And uh, uh, we just did a quick summary of the, of the story. And tonight we're going to look at, uh, we're going to continue on. I think the last thing we did, we talked about... Um, um, oh, tonight we were going to look at several important points that come up from what we learned this morning. If you missed this morning, it is going to be on uh, YouTube. It will be on there by Tuesday or Wednesday, and you can catch that. So that uh, tonight we're going to, let's, let's read again. Let's read this first chapter, verses 1 to 22. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, not Job. <laughs> Pastor Colin said to me after service this morning, he says, good job, good job. <coughs> you did a good job this morning. We don't want to get them confused. So this man named Job, that man was blameless and upright. He was one who feared God. He feared God. He, 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 he feared God as a child fears his dad. It, the fear that brings obedience, not, not the fear of a slave before his master. Reverence. Upright. He's one who feared God and turned away from evil. And that's what we should do. Fear God and turn away from evil. Sounds simple. There were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He, pos he possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, very many servants, so that this man was considered the greatest of all the peoples of the east. His sons used to go and hold feasts in the house of each, each other uh, on their birthday. And they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them. He would rise up early in the morning. He'd offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. Job was, some people think that, well, that means that what they were doing at these parties was, was evil and wrong. It was wicked. And so Job had to do these offerings, these sacrifices to God to, to consecrate his kids. It doesn't mean that at all. It, it could very well mean that Job was just such a pious man. He was such a, a religious man. Man that he just wanted to make sure that his children were going to be covered, no matter what it took. Yeah, I hope that as, as dads, we're, we are that way about our kids. We want to make sure that, that whatever they do, wherever they're going, that they're, they're, they're walking upright before the Lord. 
Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. The sons of God here means angels or messengers. The messengers of God. They, they gathered together. They had a council with God. And Satan also came among them. And if, you, if you remember who Satan is. Satan. So Satan, some people get this messed up. So Satan was, he was one of the messengers of God. And, and, and one day, Satan, thinking he was so bright, he thought, I'm going to be more powerful than God. And his pride brought him to that place where he was lying to himself and he believed it. And God said, you're out of here. Cast him out of heaven. And, and when Satan left, he took a third of all the messengers of God with him. He stole them. He convinced them that he was going to be more powerful than God. Foolishness. So they left. And now, here's God with his council of messengers... And Satan is there amongst them. Isn't that strange? It, it's kind of neat that we can see. We're seeing into the throne room of God, but, but Job doesn't see any of this. We do. Fascinating. So the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? And Satan answered the Lord, and he said, from going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down on it. Oh, what's he doing? He's, he's looking for somebody to devour. That's what Peter was talking about. Be aware of the devil's schemes. He's, he's like a, a prowling lion. He's, 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 he's wandering around. He's, he's looking for somebody to devour. And he's got somebody in mind. He found somebody. So he goes to God. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? You want to devour somebody? Have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him on the earth. He's blameless and upright. Doesn't mean he's perfect. None are righteous, no, not one. For all have sin. He's not without sin. It just means that in his character, he's upright, he's blameless. He fears God. And he turns away from evil. Satan answered the Lord and he says, does Job fear God for no reason at all? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. You've given him everything. Of course he worships you. Of course he loves you. But take that away from him and let's see how he does that. God says, yeah, yeah, that won't work. He'll still honor me. He'll still fear me. Satan says, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your hand. Satan asked God for permission. Satan cannot touch me. That's very important. First John, Satan cannot touch me. I'm a born again child of God. I'm inhabited by the Holy Spirit of God and Satan can't touch me. You know how often I think about demons? I don't. I don't. They can't touch me. They can't harm me. I'm not saying they don't exist. They do exist. Can't touch me. Can't touch this. <laughs> what? It's true. It's hammer time. It's hammer time. Woo! I love that. I love that Satan can't touch me. But, but, Satan can go to God. And he can say, he can say, I want to uh, harass Brian. I believe that if I, if I harass Brian, if I take away his beautiful wife, just getting some goals here, some points. <laughs> if I harass Brian, he will stop worshiping you. He will fall away from the faith. God says, go ahead. Go ahead. Everything he's got, it's in your hands. Go ahead. Now, I've got to learn from this. I've got to learn from this, that Satan, 
can, can have permission from God to affect my life. He can. He can't touch me without permission from God. So that's a good thing. But if God says, oh, I could use this in Brian's life. If, if something bad happened in Brian's life, I could use this to build Brian into the man that I want him to be. And God can allow that to happen. It's great that we have this insight. We wouldn't have any idea why things are happening in our lives. So he says, okay, everything that, everything that Job has is in your hands, but you cannot stretch out your hand against him. You cannot kill him. You cannot kill him. Satan doesn't kill people. God has a time appointed for each one of us to die. And, and it's, like, it's like if you read the story of Moses. Moses was not allowed to go into the promised land. So Moses stayed out of the promised land. And he died. And God buried him. Did you know that? God yeah. buried him. That's cool, right? Eh? No funeral expenses. <laughs> So this is what happened after he got permission from God. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine at their oldest brother's house. And there came a messenger to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were feeding beside them. And the Sebians, they fell upon them, they took them, and they struck down the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, that's lightning, and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans formed three groups and made raids on your camels, and they took them and struck down the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in your oldest brother's house, in their, in their oldest brother's house. And behold, a great wind came across from the wilderness, struck four corners of the house, and it fell down on them and killed every one of them. And I'm the only one that escaped to tell him. Then Job arose, he tore his robe, he shaved his head, and he fell on the ground and he worshipped. And he said, naked I come from my mother's womb, naked I shall return. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. What a day. Oh, shouldn't have woke up today. That all happened in a day. Could you make it? Did you get through that day? Last time we looked at, at this man, Job. This morning we talked about his family, his prosperity. We talked about his possessions and his friends and the troubles that came his way. Today we're going to look, or tonight we're going to look at several important truths that emerge from all of this that's happening here. First, God is sovereign. He's in control of all things. Oh, if that doesn't bring you peace in your heart, God is in control of all things. It doesn't matter how much I worry about tomorrow, it's not going to change one thing. Because God is in control and whatever's going to happen is going to happen. You know, you've heard me say before, there's all these people running around, conspiracy, conspiracy, and they're living in fear. They're, they're putting fear into each other. Oh man. The black helicopters are coming. I don't even think you're allowed to say black helicopters anymore. There's, there's all this bad stuff that's coming, and look what the government's doing, and look how this is. They're conspiring, and we're all going to be put into uh, training camps or, or some kind of war prisoner. It, you know what? It's all fear-mongering. I don't have to worry about any of that. Not a single thing. Why? Because God is in control. He's written the book for me. He told me how things are going to go. And I just trust him. We got a God who's in control of all things. He, I could drop dead right here, right now. And he's in total control of that. 
And that's okay. When things get out of control, it's because things aren't going the way we plan. That's what we think. But things aren't out of control. Well, well, look who our prime minister is. Things are out of control. The Bible says God put him there. Yep. That might sound very strange yeah. to a lot of you. Hopefully to all of you. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which way to vote. I'm not, I would never tell you guys which way to vote. We better, we're going to read a verse from Deuteronomy chapter 10. This is just a verse that was laid on my heart. Actually, go home and read Deuteronomy chapter 10. I better not do that. That's... The Lord was talking. Don't do that. Just vote right. So, um... God's in control of all things. He's on the throne of heaven. The angels do his will. They report to him. They're messengers. Angel's not really the right word, but messenger of God. The messengers, they do the things that God tells them to do. They don't sit and discuss it. They go and do it. God's in control. The Almighty is one of the key names of God in this book of Job. It's used 31 times. He's Almighty. He's in control. Almighty. He's the, he's the king of the hosts of the armies of God. He's in control of all things. He's sovereign. From the outset, the writer reminds us that no matter what happens in this world or in our lives, God is on the throne and everything is under his control. We have nothing to worry about. What did we say this morning? There was that, there was that uh, quote from Oswald Chambers. That was a beautiful one. If only I could remember it. If we fear God, we will fear nothing. If we, if we don't fear God, we will fear everything. Oh, that's beautiful. B, Satan has access to God's throne in heaven. This is important. Man, I was raised up thinking God can never look at sin. That's what I heard. God can't look at sin. And yet he can stand there and have a little conversation with Satan. That's pretty cool. If we didn't have the book of Job, we'd be all messed up trying to figure out how does all this stuff happen. Satan has access to the throne of God. He doesn't sit on the throne, but he goes before God. John Milton, he wrote a book, Paradise Lost. And, and Dante wrote The Inferno. And, and, and when, you, when, you, when you look at those things, you think that somehow there's Satan sitting on a throne and running things on earth from, from hell. Satan is never on a throne. He's not on a throne. Even in hell, God is on the throne. Satan's the one that's going to be burning. Look at, at this passage, Revelation 20, verse 10. Let's get this in perspective. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, and they will be tormented night and day forever and ever. Satan is not on a throne in hell. He's in hell burning in the flames, the same as all the demons that are cast there as well. And he's going to burn forever and ever, eternal torment, eternal destruction. Don't ever kid yourself. Don't ever. Listen, we've, my wife and I have been to churches. And I'm telling you, some of these places, they have... They have talked more about Satan and given him more glory than, than they did about God. At one place we were marching around the place, everyone's marching, and we're stomping on the devil. I don't have time for that. Jesus is on the throne. I got time to walk around praising him and marching in, in his victory. I'm not going to spend my time on Satan. Can't touch me. Today, Satan is free to go about on the earth. And he can even go into God's presence. We read that. We saw that. It's true. It happened. See, the truth is more, this truth is most important. Letter C. God found no fault with Job. 
He found no fault with Job. Satan did. God never found. This is what happens. Satan is called the accuser. He goes before the father and he accuses the brothers and sisters. He's up there in front of God right now. He's saying, Brian's such a loser. I want to torment him. He's, I'm telling you, he'll curse you to your face. Just give me a few minutes with him. And he's accusing me of being the guy who's easily tormented by Satan. I'm not. <laughs> I am not tormented by Satan. If he was here, I'd kick his butt right now. I'm not. But he accuses me. And he's falsely accusing all of you. And sometimes he'll accuse you to your face. He'll say, you know what? You're not a good follower of Jesus Christ. You might as well give it up right now. And he's trying, to, he's trying to get you to walk away from Jesus. He's already talked to God. And God said, yeah, you can torment him. Go ahead. He's not going to turn his back on you. It's kind of weird, isn't it? He's the accuser. And he's standing before the Father. He's going, that Job guy, yeah, he doesn't really love you. He doesn't really worship you. He's just hanging on because you keep blessing him. Take away those blessings. Let's see what happens. He'll curse you to your face. He's accusing. But three times, three times throughout the book of Job, God says he is not guilty. Job is not guilty. He has no fault in him. That's a beautiful thing. As you study this book, keep in mind that God said not guilty. Chapter 1, verse 8. Chapter 2, verse 3. Chapter 42, verse 7. He said not guilty. There was nothing in Job's life to compel God to bring any problems into his life. Job is not being disciplined. That's not why trouble has come into his life. There's no discipline happening. What's happening here is, is God is being attacked by Satan. Satan is accusing Job, and that's the attack on God. We can paraphrase it. Let's put it this way. The only reason Job fears you is because you pay him to do it. You two have made a contract. You protect him and prosper him as long as he obeys you and worships you. You are not a God worthy of worship. You have to pay people to honor you. That's what Satan is telling God. Job's three friends. They said Job was suffering because he had sinned. That's what they say. When we get there, you'll see that. And that was not true. Elihu said that God was disciplining Job to make him a better person. That's partly true, but not really. The fundamental reason for Job's suffering, listen to this, this is really important. The fundamental reason for Job's suffering was to silence the blasphemous accusations of Satan. That's what it was. Job went through all of that stuff all of that suffering so that God could shut Satan up. That's interesting. It was a battle in the heavenlies. Job, Job didn't know it because he didn't see what we saw. He didn't have the insights into the throne room of God. Job's life was a battlefield where the forces of God and Satan were engaged in spiritual struggle to decide the question, is God worthy of man's worship? That's what it was about. D, a fourth truth that emerges here. Satan can touch God's people only with God's permission and God uses it for their good and for his glory. That's why it happens. Philip Brooks said this, the purpose of life is the building of character through truth. That's the purpose of life. If you think, if you think that your life, your life here on earth is about making as much money as we can, enjoying all the pleasures of the world, and, and, and being as worldly as we possibly can, if, if, if that's what you think life is about, then it's going to hurt when you go through suffering. It's going to hurt when you lose your, your, your finances. It's going to hurt when, when you lose your family. It's going to hurt because you don't have anything beyond this. This is it. 
This is it. If you believe that your purpose in life is to bring glory to God, it doesn't matter what you go through. You could, God is using these things to bring glory to himself. And, and we should be willing. We should be obedient. But I don't want to lose my money. Well, then walk away from God. You still might lose it. But at least you can't blame God for it. God's got a purpose for our life, and our purpose is to bring glory to him. If we understand that, it doesn't hurt so much when you lose stuff. It doesn't hurt so much when suffering comes. It'll still hurt. We're human. Be human about this. God is at work in our lives to make us more like Jesus Christ. That's important. Hey, I've got to read a verse here. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. This is, this is a, a very misused passage. And um, Romans 8, 28. Listen to this. You'll, you'll recognize it. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. People will quote that part to you. Oh, yeah, sure. Now you put it up on the board. <laughs> we know that those who love God, all things work together for good. Well, well people use that. They say, well, you know, I'm really sorry your husband died, but, 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 but God's going to use that and, and work it for good. You're probably going to end up with a better husband than you had before. Nice. In my wife's case, that's impossible. <laughs> True. But look at the look at the second part of that verse. That that's where people went wrong. They forgot to read the second part. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. You jump to thirty days. Huh? You jump to thirty days. That's twenty nine. You missed half of eight. You missed half of eight. 28. 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Yeah, yeah. Read that. Oh, okay. That. Jump all over me. <laughs> <laughs> Could we have some order here, please? Large <laughs> fries. Here we go. Let's read this whole thing together. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for the good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So, so those that he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. We are all conform. We are to conform. We're supposed, we are going to be Conformed into the image of his son. How is he going to do that? By using all things. All things. For our good. So that we can be conformed into the image of his son. So when, when bad things come to you. It's not because. Oh, oh you lost your job. That's okay. God's going to use that for good. That means you're going to get a better job. No it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily. You've lost your job. And God's going to use that to conform you. Into the very image of Christ. That's important. Don't use that passage when some when you go to a funeral. Don't quote that passage unless you're willing to quote the rest of it. Yeah, something you think is terrible is really good because God's going to use that to conform you into His image. That's what's going to happen. That's what God's doing here with Joel. And God can use even the attacks of the devil to perfect us. There you go. Isn't that beautiful? Some of the so-called tragedies in the lives of God's people have really been weapons to God in order to shut up the enemy. Some of the bad things that we've gone through, some of the tragedies in our life have been used by God to shut up the enemy. So it's really not such a bad thing. But it hurts because we're human. But it's not such a bad thing. Meanwhile, we walk in faith and we say with Job, blessed be the name of the Lord. But, but take a look at Job's commitment here. 
in verses 20 to 22. We see the host of heaven. All of hell is watching. They're all there together. Job loses his his wealth and his children. It's all taken from him. And, and, And the hosts of heaven are sitting around and they're watching to see what Job is going to do. What is he going to do? And what happens to Job? Well, first he mourns like a regular human being. And in his culture, they rip their clothes, they shave their heads, they fall on the ground and roll in the dust. But then he rolls up onto his knees and he worships God. There's his supernatural side. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I'll return to the dust. What God has given, he can take away. What a beautiful thing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is how he reacts. And the hosts of heaven go, yes. Yes. That's fantastic. Job 121, naked I came from the mother's womb, naked I shall return. The Lord gave, the Lord takes away. We talked about that this morning. The Lord gives. There's nothing that we have that God didn't give us. Even those people out in the world who, who, who have so much, they don't even realize God gave it to them. Well, what do you mean? The guy worked hard. He became the president of the company. He came up with some good ideas. What do you think he thinks just he got his brain from nowhere? What are you, an evolutionist? Got his brain from God. Gets his wisdom from God. He gets his breaths from God. He gets his body from God. You can't do anything without God. Why? Because God's in control of all things. He's sovereign. He's in control of everything. If, you, if you're not a, a follower of Jesus and, and you got lots of stuff, yo, you, we're, pride, we're prideful people. And we're like, oh, look what I did. You have a lot of stuff you love to talk about. You ever go to someone's house and they're like a living catalog? Yeah. See that table? I paid $18,000 for that table. Well, that's a really nice table you have there, man. Yeah. Do you mind if we sit around your beautiful table? <laughs> <laughs> goodness. First he looked back at his birth, then he looked ahead to his death, and out of all that he came out worshiping God, praising his name. It's interesting that Paul said the same thing in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. We brought nothing into this world, we cannot take anything out of the world Look at and then, and then in all of this, Job did not sin or charge God with the wrong. That's chapter that's chapter one, verse twenty-two. In all of this, in all of this stuff, that picture this. Can, can, can you picture this? The dude lost his family. He lost everything that he owns, and yet he didn't sin. How many of us would be blaming God? How could you do this to me? I've been faithful to you. I watch all those preachers on TV every day. And they promise everything's going to go well. How could you allow this to happen to me? That would be the human thing, wouldn't it? The supernatural power of God in that man's life, the way the Holy Spirit worked in his heart. He didn't sin and he didn't charge God with this terrible thing. He came out of this smiling, but that's the first chapter. This is just the first chapter. There's more that happens to him. There's more things that go on. It's a great story that teaches us so much about what goes on in our spiritual warfare. People think our spiritual warfare is, you know, there's some demon living in my attic. That's not it. God is standing, talking to Satan. And and Satan is prowling around looking for someone to devour. And he goes to God and he says, can I, can I torment that person? Because I think that person's going to curse you to your face. God says, go ahead, try that. How are we going to respond to that? The, the sad part, I, listen, in case, I know a lot of you don't think this is true, but I'm human too. 
I know there's a lot of surprised faces. It's true. And, and, and when bad things come our way, like, I feel so bad. I feel so bad for all of you when I hear your stories and the things you've gone through. And I feel bad. And we've had bad things happen too, but the question is, what are we going to do with that? You're going to go through bad times no matter who you are. If you're not a follower of God, you're still going to go through bad times because sin is in this world. There's still going to be deaths. There's still going to be tragedies. Those people, oh, if your heart doesn't bleed for someone who has to go through those things without God. We have God. He gives us peace and comfort. That's fantastic. But what are we going to do with it? Are we going to blame God and walk away? Or are we going to run to God and embrace him and say, I need you right now more than ever. More than ever. Bless be the name of the Lord. Yeah, let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this teaching. I, I thank you, Lord, for the things that Job went through. Even though I can't understand, I can't put myself there and say that I could do the same thing. But I know that all things are possible through Christ who strengthens me. All things are possible with God. I know that. I just have to hold on to that. I have to trust you. I have to know you're in control of all things. God, I pray for everybody here this evening, everyone who's watching on Facebook. I pray in Jesus' name, the things they're going through, the trials, the troubles, Lord... Give them strength. Give them courage. Help them, Lord, through that mourning period. But may they end up on their knees worshiping you and thanking you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
all our praise tonight, all our love, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being with us always, Lord, for your love and goodness. And we just pray as we go from this place this week, you would help us, Lord, to trust you in all things, to look to you, Lord, for all our needs, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you, God, for what you have planned. Would you help us to share your love with those all around us, Lord, to share the plan of salvation with those we come in, in contact with, Lord Jesus. And we just look forward to being together again next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless everybody. Have a beautiful week.